I have a group of friends that they try to convince me you should, they are telling me you should not go to South Korea right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody, welcome to the association deep dive training tonight. If you are, who's here for the first time? Any newbies? Okay, one, two. Are you staying? You can stay. Okay, well, we'll see you next week. All right, so, so we got a few new people here. That's awesome. Deep dive training session is for the members of the association. You can join us online, you can come to class, or you can watch the recorded sessions. If you can't physically come to class, you get more when you're, you know, it's something about face-to-face -face interaction, right? You get more that way. But if you physically can't come here, we do have the online version, and you can join online. I do have it recorded uh, for replay, but we also have it online so that anyone who can't come can also watch it online. We do have members that's not in Georgia, and that's how they join us online. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about relationship and building relationships in the government market. We've been talking about our promotion phase. In the government market, the methodologies that we use here, we use a 5P approach, right? What are the 5Ps? Who knows the 5Ps? What is it? Preparation, promotion, Proposal, performance. Now, is it Alicia? Anisha. This is your first night. How do you know that? Wow. Okay. All of you who's been coming, all of you who's who's been coming for a while, y'all y'all been slacking. Y'all y'all let Anisha take over. Yes. Yeah. All right, so in fact, I'm going to put it up here. Uh, yep, yeah, awesome. So I'm going to put it up here just for you, Rodney. There you go. P plus P plus P equals P. And the first P is preparation. The second P is promotion. The third P is proposal. And the fourth P is performance. And if you do that, profit. equals profit, right? So right now we are in, we're not doing preparation. We've done that already. And we are in the promotion phase. Tonight is the last night we're gonna be talking about promotion. And then next week we're gonna move on to proposal. We go through six months of training under these four P's here four phases, and after we go through it, we'll start over again from preparation. Now, if you're saying, hey, we're starting at proposal, I've missed the first key, which is preparation, that's okay, because what can you do? You go online to Gov Training Vault, and as a member of the association, there's no cost for you to get on here is $39 a month for non-members, but for members of the association, it's, there's no cost. Just by being a member, we will give you a special access, a special link that will get you on here to get all this here at no extra cost. So does that make sense? We did it, that's the membership orientation. Well, we took you directly to the link. So to access this, sir, since all of you are a member, to access that, you go to Gov Association, and you have to log in. So you log in, and when you log into the site, it says members only. You see that? Members only, and because you're a member, you have access, you click on members only, and it says Gov Training Vault, and then you have to use this link to get it for free. If you don't use this link, you're gonna pay $39. You use this link, it says, okay, member access here, and you click on this here, and then it takes you to where you create your email, your password, and then you can get set up this way here. 
if you're, if you're not sure what I just said, talk to Richard or one of us after class and we'll help you get set up. Now, if you're not on Gov Training Vault yet, please talk to us after class and get set up on this here because this is one of the tools that you need to use. And let me log in, just kind of show you what's in there. So when you're in here, you, you'll have access to all, you, so you just watch the videos. And go through all these different training. Quick Start Boot Camp. Bidding on a contract, compliance tips, all these different things here. Webinars, we do webinars. Every Wednesday we do webinars. If you wanna join us for a webinar. We also have association meetings. We record all the association meetings. So if you want to, uh, let's assume you miss August meeting. So you click on this here, and it's going to pull up the video, and you just watch it. It's, it's an hour, so. Office hours, that's the 6 o'clock session, and then deep dive training session is this here. Does it, does it make sense how to get on? Okay. So I'm going to start by sharing some good news, okay? So I want to share some good news. This is uh, a testimonial that was sent in uh, this earlier this week by Dr. Carlos out in Texas, and I called him to say, "Hey, how how to go? Did you know? Did you survive the rain?" And he's in Houston, so just to kind of check on check up on him, make sure he's doing well. But right after that, he sent the, sent in this testimonial. It says, joining GCA was one of the most eye-opening experiences that I've had since pursuing government contracting. Before I joined, I attended several different meetings and conferences. All of them were beneficial, but the information was from various sources with different perspectives that left me informed, but with a fragmented education. I was challenged to see the big picture of it in all, of it all, and so my effectiveness was hindered in terms of developing a strategy to become more successful. I knew that to be successful at anything, you need a mentor or a map to cut your learning curve, someone to show you the various tricks of the trade. I did research on the web and discovered GCA and decided to attend one of the meetings. Months later, I'm glad that I participated in the incubator program. The information in that program was nothing like I've ever seen before. It was simply remarkable how well organized and structured it was. It was the map that I was looking for since my attendance I've won several contracts ranging from a contract renewal with Williamson County Jail, 19,000, 3,500 with Houston Health Department, to 5,600 with TDJC, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, and the most recent win was a 3.7 million contract with the University of Texas Medical Branch Correctional Managed Care. It was a pleasure working with Abe and his team. They clearly know what they're doing. As with any organization that asked me for my hard-earned money, I was somewhat questioned I was somewhat questionable, but I am glad I made the decision to participate in the incubator program because it was surely paying off. Mm -hmm. so, so that's Dr. Carlos. Now, Dr. Carlos invested himself. He traveled from Houston to Atlanta multiple times to meet with us. And you guys are so, so fortunate. Those of you who's here, we're in your backyard. We could have been in DC, right? I mean, the Government Contract Association should be in D.C. But because I live here in Atlanta, it started right here in your backyard. You get the privilege of coming. Now, for those of you that took four hours to get here, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Anisha, and what's your name, ma'am? Lisa. Lisa. Uh -huh. Anisha and Lisa, they traveled <laughs> about almost four hours navigating through traffic, getting lost a few times, but they're here. So it's almost like going to DC, but it's not quite going to DC. <laughs> and for the rest of you, hey, you know what? You sat in traffic a little bit. You know, you came out, it's a little inconvenient on a Tuesday night, but it is worth it because 
Dr. Carlos invested time, money. He flew here a few times. Every he was in the incubator program, so every Wednesday at 9 a.m. he got up to join us on the sessions. Now 9 a.m. for us is 8 a.m. for him, so that meant he had to get up earlier. So if you want something, you just invest in yourself and go after it, and and that's what he did. So very proud of what he's done. 3.7 million dollar contract. Uh, that that's totally awesome. New, uh, new Dimension Pharmacy, but his company is called Baselia Group, and then but they're doing business as New Dimension Pharmacy. He sells drugs, <laughs> 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 the legal drugs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's go into a deep dive training tonight. So we've been talking about marketing, we've been talking about email marketing, we've been talking about your capability statements and what it needs to look like. We've talked about your dream 100 and any questions about what we've been talking about in the past few weeks? Any questions? Who started on the dream 100? I only received two emails to request for the dream 100. No, I don't know. You got to take action. If you, if you snooze, you lose. <laughs> All right, so if you want the Dream 100, shoot me an email, and I will get you the Dream 100 list. It will save you time, and it will allow you to build your, one dream, your Dream 100 so you can have a targeted approach to marketing in the agency. There's 85,000 agencies out there. Where do you go? Who do you start with, right? There's over 3,000 counties. Which counties do you do business with? There's over 30,000 cities and districts. Who do you do business with? And by creating your Dream 100, it allows you to have a specific targeted approach so that you're not chasing contracts. You're setting a trap, and you're letting contracts come to you. If you have a strategy, that's how it works. If you don't have a strategy, you say, oh, there's a project over here. I, let me get registered in L.A. County. Oh, there's a project in Chicago. Let me get registered with the city of Chicago. There's a project in North Carolina, and you're all over the place, and you have no strategy. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking about how – yes, question, Hafisa? The capability statement? Capability statement is your one-page marketing document, and think of it as a business resume. Every business will need a capability statement. If you're marketing the government market and you're using a brochure, that's going to make you look not prepared. The government does not use brochures. They use capability statements, and I'm going to give you a quick example. In the software, all the training that we do for a deep dive comes from our software. In the software, I have templates in here. So all you have to do is when you invest in the software, you can, you can get all these templates. Open up the, the template. And this is a one page capability statement. And you can see it here. It's one page. Where it says logo, you delete that and you put your logo here. The title of this document is called Capability Statement. Dunn's number, you delete it and you put your Dunn's number here. Certifications, you put your certifications here. If you don't have certifications yet, but you started applying for it, you can put pending. You see this here, pending. If it's pending, that means you started the process. Now, if you haven't started the process, don't put pending because you're lying to the government. You don't want to lie to the government because it will come back and bite you, right? But if you started the process, you can put pending because pending is fine. If you've been approved in the program, then list the ones that you do have. Put your key personnel. Put your NAICS code over here. Put your contact information, past performance, and all this stuff. So we covered this there in a few weeks ago. If you want to watch this here, go to the Gov Training Vault and go to the Deep Dive Training Sessions.
Um, we probably covered it in the 8.15 or 8.22. I'm going to get Andrew to put the titles in. I'm not sure why the title is not in here. but. So one page, one side. One page, yes. One page, one side. You're, you use the one page to email and market. And if you use two pages, it's two pages, it's too long for them to see. It's kind of like think of it as you're applying for a job for you know for some of you who's still working when you are applying for a job you send a one-page resume of you now you have a long version also the one that has details and the one that all the accomplishments that you've done and since you left high school you got the long version <laughs> right but you don't put the long version when you're initially engaging someone you use a one pager there's also a two-pager, right? There's a two-pager, which is printed front and back. The two-pager is for networking, and when you're meeting someone, it's printed front and back. It's still one page, one paper, but it's front and back. And then there's a long version, which is four to eight pages. That's the one where you, they ask you, oh, send me more information about your company, then you send that long version. So that, so, but that was a few weeks ago, so I just want to do a quick summary because someone had a question on that. Let's tackle today's stuff here. So now that you have your Dream 100, this is the different people that needs to go into your Dream 100. So you need relationship with small business officers. And let me get rid of that little triangle here. Um, let's see here. So you need a relationship with small business officers. Sometimes these people will call your small business specialists. In the commercial market, you need relationship with small business specialists also. But in the government market, these small business specialists, sometimes they it is the OSDBU, the Office of Small Business Utilization. Sometimes you need the a relationship with the SADBU, Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization Specialists. Now I I I joke that. The SABU is appropriately named because they're called SAD. <laughs> Why are they SAD? Because they cannot meet the small business set aside goal. So they need to be happy boo instead of the SABU, right? So the SABU, their job, the OSTABU, their job is to engage small businesses and make sure that the agency meet the small business set aside goal. And what is the small business set aside goal? 23%. 23% is the set aside goal that federal agency must award to small businesses. Now 23% may seem like a small number, right? But 23% of $500 billion <laughs> That's a lot of money, right? Who's got a calculator? What's the exact number on that? 25% of $500 billion. 125? Yes, $125 billion. So it's a lot of money. So, so you'll need a relationship with the SABU. You need a relationship with the SBA boss. We have how many companies in the ADA program? Jacqueline, raise your hand. Uh, in Georgia? No. Who's in the AD program? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Two. You're in the AD program? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. how come I don't know that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we got two companies in the AD program. If you don't have your AD yet, make sure you talk to them. Because if you're looking for AD set aside or AD sole source, they can team up with your company. They will win the contract and you guys split the work. 
Okay. Okay. Disaster. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so are they going to start subbing some that work to you? Well, and I don't know if I really crossed my board with HDI, the largest manufacturer in the country. And I partnered with this guy for most of the time. He has what's called an icon. Okay. It's a new technology that is connected to highways. Yeah. And it connects to tech, which is a soft pedal for the automatic cars. Yeah. So this is an old system. And he got us with HDI because we're 8A. Um, they had this contract with him. He's like, well, you know somebody that's that's 8A, kind of what we're talking about. You're like, boom, 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 boom. I just put a joint case there together today. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so. Uh-huh. Okay, so I just found this out when Richard was doing his presentation Yeah. And you didn't hear me say that they don't get so blue till I'm just catching it. I'm sorry. The question is, I didn't realize, uh, what I did kind of realize is with this thing I told you I was working on, uh, when I called you, mm -hmm. I got that too. Woo! Awesome! Yeah, I didn't get that, but I just, I, I realized with that, that you can actually, you didn't actually have to have, it didn't have to be right under your next code. Correct. You, you need to have one primary next code. Uh -huh. And you can have 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 if you want, but I don't recommend 100. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my next my real question is though so, anyone in, uh, we can work with anyone in the room, do they have to be 8A too? Nope. That's why they need you, because you're 8A. Cool. So Large I, companies. I have a jan jan janitorial job. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I want to ask someone in here to. Basically, yes. They want the job. Now, what qualifications do they just have to have a legitimate business? They need, they need to have a little bit of experience because you don't have experience, so they need to have experience. Right. Typically, three projects. They're going to usually ask for three references. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I think you like 200, you never thought of 100? Mm -hmm. But not for that. You just like that. Um, our small business stats. But isn't another opportunity for the group under 150,000 no bids? That's what I'm talking about. 150,000 is called SAP. SAP. Simplified Acquisition Procedures. Yeah, those are easy sole source. They sole source that every day if you're 8A company. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a good topic. I'm going to come back and address the mentor protege that you mentioned earlier and address different types of relationships that you need to have. But let me come back to this, talking about the small business specialist here. So if you are 8A company, you're going to be assigned a boss, a BOS. Now for, for most of you, you are the boss, right? But once you get into the 8A program, you get a new boss. And usually, most of them are pretty good bosses. And so, you know, BOS, they're going to help you grow your 8A company. Now, you have to help them to help you. So keep that in mind. They're not going to go out of their way to say, hey, I got a project for you. That may happen. Like an agency might call uh, your boss and say, hey, I've got, I got this project. Any of your 8A companies can do this. Or, that does happen every now and then. So that's why you have to keep a good relationship with your boss and touch base with them at least once a month. At least once a month. Ideally, maybe, you know, you might call them once a month, but email them two or three times a month. Keep them abreast of what you're working on, what projects you're going after, and, 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 and keep them in the loop with you. And then you need relation with the DOD Office of Small Business Program, GSA Small Business Utilization Centers. All these are different uh, different programs that you need to have with. So how do you find these people? So Osterboo, 
you go to OSDBU. That's it. Just Google OSDBU because they're uh, now different agencies have different OSDBU offices. So the VA have their own OSDBU office. So just click on here. If you want to do work for the VA, now. Yes, question? Yeah, I'm going I'm to show it to you in a second. So the VA has their Austin office, Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization, Vendor Formation. They have events, learn about the NVSBE, confirm VA procurement decision makers, buyers. And if you want to do business with a VA, then you have to study how they like to buy from businesses. It's kind of like you, you know, for guys, you have an interest in a, I'm talking about the single guys, okay, not the married guys. <laughs> single guys, you have an interest in a, in a, in a you, you went to church and you, you met a young lady at church and you say, wow, you know, she's new in town, she's, she, she's interesting, let me find out more about her, right? So you ask all your friends about her. And then you get the inside scoop that she's new in town and she's just got a job, she moved her. You find out about what kind of work she likes. You find out all kinds of different things about her before you even talk to her, right? I mean, that's how we do it. You should do it the same way. Well, at least that's how I did it, right? <laughs> now, 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 some of you, you went to match.com and you did a mass story. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the government does not have match.com yet. So you start to do the old fashioned, the, the, the old way of how, how you build relationship. So you have to come and study this agency and get to know them and find out what type of contracting they like to put out and how they like to buy from small businesses. And this is how you do it. So you come, you see all this in information, they got presentations, they got town hall meetings, they got you know, resources, click on exploring, doing business with them, click on the explore the portal. How to start a business, accessing financing, growing your business, finding opportunities, resources for veterans, and on and on and on and on and on, right? Do you mind just saying the name the website? Just Google OSDBU. Okay. And all the OSDBU will show up. Because OSDBU means nothing else to other to the rest of the world. Only in the government market is there's such an acronym called OSDBU, and it's pronounced OSDBU. It's not a real word, but we pronounce it OSDBU. Now, the best conference you can go to is the OSDBU conference. It happens every year. It's usually during April. I'm telling you early in advance because the uh, they usually sell out, and there's Austin boosts from all the agencies. I, I, I will tell you that 90 to 95 percent of all the agencies, the all small business specialists, they will go to this event here. And if you want to go to one event and meet hundreds and hundreds of small business specialists, then this is the event to go to. It's usually in D.C., or in fact, it's always in D.C., as long as I can remember. And it's in April, and this is the 28th year that they've done it, and there's hundreds and hundreds of agencies there. This is the best event to go to to meet with people. So that's, that's for Osterbu, right? You can do that for the Department of Interiors. You April 20-something. April 20 uh, it doesn't have a date yet. What does it say? Does it say over here? Yeah, it's usually April 20th, April 20, you know, it's like a one day event. It's usually April 20th, somewhere around, you know, somewhere around the 20th, somewhere around there. And you, and if you have a, a, a growing business, you can get a vendor table. And if you don't, if you can't get a vendor table, just go up there and go meet everybody and take plenty of business cards, take plenty of uh, capability statements, 
and go and gather. Now, you're not going to have time to meet with everybody, but gather the information and, and follow up with emails and, and go do, do it that way. All right, so let's come back to here. So Osterboo, that's one relationship you need to have. That is the key. Now, contracting officers. You need to have a relationship with contracting officers. The way you get a guaranteed appointment with contracting officer, anybody knows how you get a guaranteed appointment with a contracting officer? They, they have to meet with you or talk to you, guarantee you. What, Tahira? Schedule appointment, they can always say no. How do you get a guaranteed appointment with a contracting officer? You build a relationship, but they, they may still not have time to meet with you. Those are, yeah, pre bidders conference is a good way to meet with a contracting officer. So, pre bidders conference. So, for example, let's assume that the CD is having a pre bidders conference and it's a project that you're not even really interested in, but it's an opportunity to go and meet with the procurement officers. So, you go and you meet people. And, and you meet other businesses that's there that may be looking for a woman-owned business, maybe looking for a veteran-owned business, maybe looking for a janitorial company that they need to partner with. So it doesn't have to be something that you're personally interested in, but you go there to build a relationship with them. That's one way of how you can get a bless you. You can get a guaranteed FaceTime with them. Question? Um, is there a way where you bless you. I know they have a couple of conference in DC. I know they have one, you know, mm -hmm. kind of through the organization, we can find out where those events are. So we can yes, I'll show you that in one second. The, the best way to get a guarantee appointment is this here ask for a debrief. What's a debrief? If you did not win a contract, and you ask for a debrief in three days or less, they have to give you a debrief. They have to. They cannot say, ah, I don't have time to meet with you. They cannot do that. Now, it depends how you ask for a debrief. They can give you a debrief in three different ways, three main ways. They can give you a debrief by email. They can give you a debrief by phone conversation or they can give you a debrief by face-to-face -face meeting. Which one do you want? Face-to-face -face meeting. Face meeting, right? But it depends how you ask them for the debrief. Let me give you an example. You submitted a proposal. Now, if you identify that NIH or FEMA, right now FEMA is the agency to work with, right? Because all the disaster relief work. Let's assume that you want to do work for FEMA. There is a FEMA office like three minutes, five minutes from here. Do you guys know that? Okay. A contracted office right off the street What's on Chamley Tucker. Are you serious? Yeah, right there. Contracted office five miles from here. And I mean, not five miles, five minutes from here. It's only a mile and a half from here. It's called, I mean, it's FEMA. Like FEMA, FEMA contracted office, yeah. It's, wow. And. Annette, she's a friend of ours. She, she, she's up right up there and she comes to our meetings from time to time. So this is a great way to meet her. Um, but assuming you want to do business, let's, they have a project and you say, well, I'm not super qualified, but I'm kind of qualified. I don't, I'm, I don't have a teaming partner yet, but I'm still going to submit a bid. A few things will happen when you submit a bid. You get the practice, but more importantly, you might get lucky and win, right? right. And even though you know you're not going to win, but if you don't win, you get the benefit of getting a guarantee appointment. You get the debrief. They're going to send you an email and say, oh, sorry, you didn't win. You say, it's okay. But when you don't win, most of the time when people don't win, what's their natural reaction? They get mad. They say, I spent five hours putting this together, and how dare them not choose me? I'm the most qualified company. That's everybody, right? 
Your kid is always the most beautiful child in the world, right? Your proposal, your bid is the most beautiful bid in the world. Your company is the most qualified company in the world. Which is fine, because you have to feel that way. You have to be proud of your company. But most of the time, when you're engaging contractor also, after you didn't win, I would say 70% of the time, people are calling to cry about why they didn't win. I didn't win, I'm the lowest bidder, or I'm the most qualified, why didn't you award it to me? Do you think they want to meet with you face to face? No. Of course not. You're not a too. But that happens, trust me, that happens often. That's why they don't want to meet with businesses when you don't win on a project. So my suggestion is to take a completely different approach. You use the debrief as a marketing tool. Now, don't tell contractor officer that, okay? <laughs> That's our insider secret here. That's your marketing strategy. You bid on a project, and if you win, celebrate. You know you're probably not going to win because you're using it as practice. But when you don't win, you ask for your debrief. You, the way you ask for debrief is this here. You shoot them an email within three days. If you don't send it in, in writing, you don't have a record of it. I'll, I'll come back to you in one second. You don't have a record of it. So you have to do it by email so that you have a, a record that you, you ask for debrief in three days or less. Then you also make a phone call, email. email and phone call. But the way you ask for debrief is this here. And you can do it in, by typing or by phone message. But this is the gist of it. Hey, contractor, Bob, whatever the person's name is. I, I got the notice that we weren't a recipient of the contract. That's totally fine. We've identified that your agency is a great agency and you buy, you, last year you bought $25 million in, in services that we provide. And what we're interested in building a long-term relationship with you for projects in the future. I'd like to request a debrief with you because I want to find out what we didn't do right, what we can do better, and how we can support you going into the future. And would you grant me a face-to-face -face debrief for about 15 to 20 minutes? Don't ask for an hour debrief, just ask for a 15 minute debrief. And if they like you, they're gonna spend an hour with you. If you go in for a debrief and five minutes into it, they say, ah, oh, okay. 15 minutes into it, they say, ah, oh, sorry, time's up, that means the relationship is not going well, right? You're either rubbing them wrong or something's not clicking. But if you go in there 15 minutes later and they're not looking at the clock, an hour later, and they say, oh, wow, man, time had passed by. I've got another meeting to go to. That's a good sign. But that's how you ask for debrief. You, you use it as a relationship tool. You don't use it as a beat them up why you didn't win. Question. Yeah, the question is when the clock is clicking for that. When you receive the email or when the contract is being awarded? The, the day you receive your letter. They either send you a letter or they send you an email. To, every now and then they might call you, but chances are they're going to do email or, or letter. So that's when the three days? Yes, that's when the three days starts. Window is started. Mm -hmm. Okay. That has uh -huh. nothing to do with the day that the contract is awarded? No, not the day it was awarded. Because that. They probably they will notify you before they publicly put publish it sometimes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Question. When you deny the proposal, will the open um, record act work to where you can view the one that was awarded? Can you look at that? That's a very very important comment there. So the question is, if you don't win on a contract, is there a way you can get the winning? Proposal, so you can study it. What's the answer? Yes. yes. yes you can. What's that process called? Open Record Act. Open Record Act, but what's the actual regulation? Freedom of Information Act. That's the full name. And let's assume that you, let's go to VA, right? You, you bid on a project with the VA and you didn't win. FOIA, FOIA request with VA, Veterans Affairs. And so you put in the agency, you see that? How to submit a FOIA request. 
FOIA, Freedom Information Act. And you can go in here, you can ask for who was the awarded contract, you can get the, you can get the proposal that they submitted. Now, if they just submitted yesterday, it's not in the system yet, right? So, you, so if you request it immediately, it may not be in their system. But if it's been a month or two, you could probably ask for it and it should be in the system. They're going to charge you like 20 cents a copy, 20 cents a page or something like that, or a, a few pennies a page for their time. And, and there's no, they're not trying to make money on it. They, they just got to cover the printing costs. And, and they will get that to you. So you have to give them the solicitation number. You have to, you have to give them the agency. You have to give them the, the contract officer's name and, and information so they can find it for you. Now some FOIA requests goes very easy and very smooth. Some of it, it may take three months for them to get back with you. The regulation says that they have to give it to you in a timely manner though. So if you send a request and you don't get it, do it again. And then call the office, the uh, the you know the office that handles FOIA requests, and talk to someone, and they'll get it to you. It's like going to the library, and they'll they'll get you the, the information you request. Now, why is it important to get a proposal of the winning company? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. You can do teaming with them. You know what the pricing is. You you see you see how different they are from your proposal that you submitted. Powerful, powerful there. You can ask it. You can ask it from 1975 if you want. Yeah. You can go and you can, yeah, just you ask almost anything you want. It's it's public information unless it's classified as top secret, confidential or something. Now you might ask for a proposal, and there's going to be a lot of things redacted, right, marked out. And you'll get the proposal, but the pricing might be marked out, the the secret sauce might be blacked out, and so forth. And, no, it still helps you. So you still see other things. Yeah, you, know, you might have a few uh, some bits and pieces here marked out, but you can make out the general gist of what they're trying to say. Yeah. You say they charge for each page, so nowadays we use technology to take the system. You can't do that. They're gonna send it to you the way they. That agency have a certain way of how they send it up. Okay. And if they do it by mail, they're going to do it by mail. If they do it by PDF, they're going to do it by PDF. Okay. So depending. Right here it says fee information. Okay. Look at the fee information. Okay. So how do you get the proposal contract solicitation number to be able to send one? Well, you, 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 you bid it on the project. So you have a solicitation number already. And you are, you are, you know, it was, you got the award notice, so you know all the information you need to know. And through that, they can find it for you. Like in a bill. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big invoice number. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. All the information you need is, is there. So, so that's a very good point there. FOIA requests, very powerful. So, so the debrief is an awesome tool in terms of how you use it. Now, there's some other ways of how you engage. Let's talk about contracting officers, right? How else can you engage contracting officers? Are you talking about just like events? You can go to events, like the Austin Book Conference is one. Events on our software, you have to go up a little bit further up here. And we put events in here. Yeah, so some networking events. I have a whole list of networking events here. So as often as you want. I call it appropriately aggressive. Okay? <laughs> appropriately aggressive. Now, guys, if you're pursuing a young lady, right, and you're not appropriately aggressive, she's going to think you're stalking her. But, but, if, but if you're not aggressive enough, 
she she might fall for somebody else, right? So you have to be appropriately aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> but let's assume you go to Gov Events. Gov Events is one with the S. GovEvents.com. They have lots of events there. And you just, yeah, yeah. There's agencies. There's you know many different people here. And there's but there's things not related to government contracting also. But just come and find all the events here. And you're going to find some in Atlanta, you're going to find some in DC, you're going to find some different places. But you come on here and just go up here and search. Whatever is that for? Or that it's, and it's free to join this organization. GovEvents.com. Yep. And, okay. and I put janitorial or whatever I want to put in here. And so there's an emergency FEMA contracting, the five W's. See, we got the five P's, they got the five W's. <laughs> So I actually so know you can search by field. By you can search field. it by many different ways. So I actually know this this lady here has some insight. She's got a consulting company in the government market. So so use use these different places. And SBA have events, the GSA have events, many of these places. If you don't know where to go, just type it. Just Google it. Google is your best friend, right? So just put in GSA events if you want to attend GSA events. And just Google that and it will take you to their site, GSA events. You click on their events page. GSA have online events, they have webinar, they have physical face-to-face -face events. So, so that you can see it, right? Online, 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 online. All these different events. And see which one you want to go and so forth. So there's there's lots of stuff. All right, so let's come back to uh, I was talking about before I got into events. Oh, oh, I was talking about another way of how you build relationship with contracting officers. First of all, how do you find contracting officers? What? The internet is one, yes. And I will give you a few specific sites on the internet. So I'm going to start off with one is called Gov Tribe. Gov Tribe, like the Indian tribe. Gov Tribe. They have a free version, so yeah. So you come on here and let's assume you want to find agency. Click on here, click on explore, and click on agencies. And you want to find contracting officer for, let's assume this, we're in Atlanta, so I'm going to put CDC. I'm going to put CDC, jump in Jehoshaphat, couldn't find anything. So centers for disease. All right, what's up, what's up, what's up with that? Contracting for federal agencies, including award. Well, let's go with, I'm just going to choose one here. I just start typing and it shows up. So it will tell you lots about this agency. Ooh, CIA does not spend any money. Why do you think it shows that they're not spending money? They're hiding all their money. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
So I'm gonna look at HHS. And it tells you all the money they spend, top vendors, top contracting vehicles they like to use. It tells you the people, it tells you the office. You can do by, and so this is one place. Let me show you a different place. So God Tribe is a private sector organization, so they just aggregate information. Now the other place is fbo.gov. You go to fbo.gov and you click on advanced search. And you come down here and you put in here where it says specific agency or location, right? And you put in an agent, Who, which, what agency you guys wanna look at? In FEMA, Federal Emergency Management. That's under Homeland Security. So I put FEMA here, and I'm just gonna leave a blank for what industry you wanna look at. What industry you wanna look at? Oh, medical. Medical, okay. Medical What's your next scope? Four, two, three, four, five, zero. Come on, girl. All right, woo! Yeah. Check it! Yeah. She deserves. She deserves. Pay a war. You just need to be salty. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. So, four, two, four? Four, two, three. Four, two, three? Four, five, zero. Four, five, zero. Okay, good job. Awesome. I'm so proud of you. You're honest. <laughs> and I'm going to search. All right, so I don't care what project it is. Because right now, all I'm trying to do is find out which contracting officer I'm trying to build up my dream 100, right? And I want to find my top 20 contracting officer I want to build a relationship with. So I want to say, okay, all these folks here, they, they're buying medical supplies and medical equipment. And so, I, so I'm just going to click on one of the project. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, what do you get? Yes. So you can kind of start to build this relationship. Mm -hmm. On Gov Tribe? Yeah. Gov Tribe is to find contracting officer also. Or you can find previous awarded contract, you can find who's winning contract, and you can use it for team purpose. Yeah, it can you it can be used for many different things. So play around with it. But for this purpose, you use it to find contracting officers. And so, so here's another trick. Here's another trick. You see this here at fema.dhs.gov. Uh -huh. You take this portion of it. I'm not sure why it's not capturing that. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to search just that extension. I'm going to search Google. Oh, well, you need to be. You need to be. You got the. But you need the ad in there. Oh no no no! I yeah yeah yeah! I need to put the at. Oh, because it's the dot gov. So I can't use the dot gov. Oh, you, that's. You need to be. Huh? Broke and messed that up. Yeah, because Google kind of messed that up. Because. Right. So. Because it has the dot gov. And yeah, I guess it didn't work that time. There's another one. I'll, I'll remember how to do it the other time. But but this is one way, okay? So you come on here, you find Isaac, you find Monique, and you, and let's assume that you weren't, you don't know how many projects that they put out, right. and you go back to the list, and. 
and you find you look at another project and you're going to start to see a pattern as you start to put their emails together oh who's this again so so the way contracting officer work is this here contractor officers are assigned to specialized industries why yeah cuz different industry have different jargon different requirements and so forth so they're not going to get someone who buys construction products to buy medical supplies they're two different worlds so the person that is handling all the medical equipment medical supply contracts they generally kind of stay in the area the person who's handling construction services and janitorial services they kind of stay in their in their field so mm -hmm. If I'm, if I'm medical supplies, and so in this instance, Rodney, there's a janitorial, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to team up again. And so we identify some janitorial um, projects. Mm -hmm. Then when I call the contracting officer, are they going to ask me too many questions that's really specific to janitorial that would just really trip me up? You give them a question and my well, question well, how do I approach yeah. that? Well, first of all, you're not just going to blindly do that. So, so, so your strategy is you say, okay, right now I do medical supply. Right. A natural extension of that is what? Not, not janitorial. A natural extension of that is, is, yeah, it could be, it could be safety product or it could be medical staffing. Right, it could be uniform. It could be other types of products or janitorial supplies. So you don't jump from medical supplies to janitorial services. You you jump you jump by something that's close to what you're currently doing, so that it's not hard for you to learn. And then after maybe two or three months or six months of doing doing janitorial supplies, then you kind of start to know the lingo. You get familiar with the industry. Then you can team up with Ron. You say, hey, you know what? I've been doing janitorial supplies. I like to venture into the service side. Let's meet. Let me learn more about service and how does pricing work? Do you do by square footage? Do you do by and, and, and get to know the industry? Yeah, by the hour and so forth. And then you get to know the industry, and then then you you let him go bid on some. If they ask you different things, you, and you don't know the answer, you look weak. But what you want to do is you want to say, oh yeah, hold on, let me get my let me get my supervisor on the phone. Yeah, he's your supervisor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your supervisor gets on the phone. So Isaac Chappelle or Chapel, I don't know, just Chapel. Chappelle? Chapel. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his brother. Yeah. So it's Chapel? <laughs> it's probably chapel, yeah. Okay, so 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 that's another way. You have to build up the list, and you eventually start to see a pattern. Oh, wow, this guy handles all these contracts. Now, this is probably the most important thing I'm going to teach you tonight. Now, this secret, very few people know this secret. Very few. I'm you talking about, about to tell you. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to turn off the recorder. So no one knows the secret. You have to be in class to know the secret. Now, once you find a person that you want to engage with, you have many ways of engaging them, right? You can email Isaac Chappelle. You can make a phone call because his phone number is in here. But guess what? That's called interruptive marketing. Interrupted marketing is they're doing something else and you're calling them, interrupting them in the middle of lunch or something. That's called interrupted marketing. That's okay, that's good, but that's not the best way of marketing, right? The best way of marketing is called branding. Like when you're dri driving down the road and you're looking at the billboard, you see Delta. It just says fly Delta. That's all it says. It doesn't have a Chicago special, $99. It doesn't have anything like that. It's not a sales promotion. It's just it's branding. Now, branding is important, right? Branding is to imprint on someone 
so that when there is a time to make a purchase decision, you're going to fly Delta. You're going to choose that person to work with. So when you're doing direct marketing, you can send them a letter. You, you do you know, direct marketing. You can make a phone call. You can do an email. Those, everybody else is doing that. You want to do something that very few other people are doing. That's good. You can send a video too, but I'm going to show you a technique tonight. What are your three options here? What should you do? Add me to the interested vendor list. You click on this here, and it asks you to. But you have to log in first. You have to. You have to be logged in. And you can add yourself on there. And you can do it. You know, as you as you do this here, right? Your names right here, interested vendor list. So that's located on. Um, so do they actually go to the list? There's a contracting officer. They manage that. They have to see who's interested, who's bid. If they have zero interest, that means they got to do some marketing to get some people to bid on this here. You might be the only one who's bidding. I'm the only one that's going to be contacted to. Yeah, they might just pick up the phone and say, hey, no one else is interested. Are you interested in the project? And you say, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm an 80. Well, I have an 80 TV partner. Can you so source it? Tahira, question? Um, also, other businesses, they look at that list too because I put myself on the list for Yes. And then when I thought about it, um, I was like, okay, that's how I got my information. And a contracting officer reached out to me a couple of weeks ago in reference to the solid waste removal in San Antonio and Quality from Lackland Air Force Base. Keep in mind, I never even put myself on the list, nor did I solicit it. But due to my NACE code, I noticed that he went on my business LinkedIn. I just, I was able to go back and track to see how he found me and he said, look, are you interested? He said, yes, so hurry up and bid on this. So that just, contracting officers usually don't reach out to you unless they already have a relationship. So that just lets me know that he didn't have anybody. And I didn't have enough time. It wasn't realistic for me to contact a solid waste removal company in San Antonio and to try to get a realistic quote within 24 hours. But so I responded to him. I was honest. I said it's not realistic for me to submit a quote. However, for future reference, please keep me on the list so that he can keep my name. That's right. So that's that's good. Yeah. That's, and, and he appreciates that you communicate with them and that you were genuine, you were honest, you tell him exactly the situation, and he'll remember that, he'll appreciate it next time he's got a project. So, so you use FBO as a branding tool, and other companies will find you. For example, let's assume that you added yourself to the interested vendor list, a large company in Virginia, but the project is in Georgia. They need a subcontractor in Georgia, and they win the contract. They're going to call up these companies and say, hey, we, got, you know, we need a sub subcontractor on this project. Can you do this work? So a lot of good things are going to come by adding yourself to the interested vendor list. Every single project you look at, every well, you you never know you do your dream 100. You, yeah, you don't do everything. You just focus on your dream 100. That way you're not doing 85,000 agencies. Yeah. You don't have enough time to do everything. So, no, no, I didn't yeah. mean everything. I was just saying, even with your dream 100, just be in Georgia? No. So, your dream 100, it depends on your target. Your dream 100 might be in the southeast. So for some company, their dream one is only in Georgia. It just depends on your dream 100. So, so every time you click on one of these projects, even though you don't bid on it, add yourself to the interested vendor and just go to the next project. You, 
They start to see your name over, and, and the next time they see you, they, your name, they say, oh, I know this company. Where do I know them from? Right? Yes. 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 Subliminal messaging, right? Show up. You always have to show up, even digitally. Yes. And, and that's... You always have to show up, uh, yeah. even that is digitally, you know? Yep, you're showing up digitally. Exactly. That's true. That's reputation. Uh, All right, so we're almost out of time. So in fact, we're out of time. So let me wrap it up here. So, so I showed you, the last thing I need to talk about, I showed you a lot of important techniques in terms of how to go and find companies, agencies, contracting officers, and, and building relationship. what techniques to use. Last thing I want to talk about is subcontracting primes the nature of that relationships teaming and joint venture and mentor proteges so, you know and then other things you know we're not going to be able to have time to consider but i want to talk about this here tonight so let me address that quickly let me see if i have a little write up on this here Right, so I have it uh, up here. Let me go to the other session that I have under strategy. Preparation strategy. All right. So let me explain the difference here. So in the government market, there's many different strategies in terms of how you go and get a contract. You can be a prime to the government, to the agency itself, or you can be a subcontractor and let somebody else be the prime. So those are the two paths. Now, of the prime or being a sub, which is the easier way? Sub. Sub is easier. Why? Yeah, less responsibility. You, you don't have to know how to write a proposal. Somebody else knows how to write a proposal, and you're just part of the team. So, so being a sub is the faster way to getting contracts. But you're at the mercy of how good the prime is, right? The prime can pay you on time. The prime can be total slack. So, so you have to kind of be able to trust them a little bit. But the best way ultimately is to be a prime. But starting off being a subcontractor is usually a good way to get to contract fast. But there's a few ways of how those relationships work. It can be a prime and a subcontractor relationship. And in that type of relationship, you will need a subcontractor agreement don't be part of a project verbal only right cynthia right. <laughs> even if you gotta have a paperwork done you lose out three five million dollars you know? yeah she was in a she was in a relationship we won't call out anybody's name but she was in a relationship with a large company and they say hey we're going to use your woman-owned business you're going to use your minority certification we're going to use your status Woman, I think it was a woman, right? We're going to use your woman's status to, to help us get this big contract. And I had every certification on the name. Okay. And she got all those certifications. She got the contract. Mm -hmm. Well, they got the contract and they gave her zero. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You was a sub. Are you taking seriously? I wrote up such a percentage of it, it was unreal. I have no business being for that business. It was that eight month process because they were in a hundred million dollars. So, <laughs> so well, you don't sue the industry that you've been working in. So what you do is you, you bite the bullet and you say next time, whatever. So, so okay, you 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 can't sue, but you have to have a ground, right? If you are, and that's what I'm talking about. These relationships. So when you're bidding on a project with a large company, large company does not respect small business at all because you're, you're a dime a dozen to them. If, if, you don't, if it doesn't work out with you, there's another company lined up to work with them. So they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't treat you with respect. I didn't have a contract. So I had to So they were moving here, and then I went to DC, I went to the function, I went to all kinds of stuff. But it wasn't a contract. So, 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 so,
So, so here's here yeah if you can have a subcontractor agreement with a large company and they can bid on the project and they can win and they can they do not have to choose you. So what the proper one? I'm just trying to What you need in that situation you because you have a subcontractor agreement you can sue them. That's the only other way out. If if you have a subcontractor agreement, you can sue them. But guess what? That's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. And that's what another major company told me when I interviewed. They said one company said sue them, and I said, and then another guy said, do that sue them. That's the largest. The company she's talking about is a large company, and she's gonna she's gonna meet them again at some point. And, yeah, and it's going to be a different because because that company has forty you know, thousand thousand employees. It's going to be a different person, different division, different team, and you're going to be able to do work with them. And so, and so, so you have to gauge if it's worth it. Now, let me let me let me let me say how you protect yourself in that situation. You do a teaming agreement. She only has a subcontractor agreement. You have a team agreement, and the team agreement is submitted with the proposal, and then you're named on the contract as a subcontractor and a team partner on that project. And if if they don't do a sub award the work to you, then you can protest to the government, not to them. You're not going to sue them. That you're going to protest it to the government, and you have many different places. You can go to the SBA, you can go to the Obunsman, you can go to the contractor officer, you can go to the supervisor, you can go to GAO, you can go to OMB. You have a lot of recourse without suing them, and that's what you want to do. Do you have the team agreement? Do you have a, an idea or an example? Hold on a second. Let's, let's one comment at a time. Do you have any idea or a sample or a standard of those contracts? I have teaming agreement samples. You see, we have I have over 190 attachments in here. Okay. And in here, it's in the software. If you just put in here teaming. So now, so and so sample teaming agreements. No, 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 no. Hold on, I'm answering this question first. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so if you need a team agreement, it's in the software. Software is $999 as a member. All this stuff. I mean, you're going to pay an attorney $500 to $1,000 to get an agreement from them anyways. Here, I've got a whole bunch of other agreements, templates, many so different things. I don't recommend filling in anything. You, I, I have two or three samples in here. You want to read through it and make sure that the Example of the team agreement is a good match for your situation. So then, what if what if, the, what if you are applying on the contract? You still need a team you, agreement. You still need a team agreement on the prime. Yes. You need a prime, uh, like you got the subcontractor's contract. You need a prime. Uh, you as a prime, the team it protects you also because they can back out on you. And I've had a company do that. She's a small business. She bid on a contract in North Carolina. And so she doesn't have any relationship in North Carolina. The company was with her in Georgia, and they just had a verbal agreement. She won the contract without a team agreement, and now it's time to go perform. And the company says, I've got other projects. I can't go. And oh, wow. they're not on the they team agreement. Yeah, so they just didn't show up. And so she had to scramble and go save that project and find someone that costs higher up in North Carolina to do the work. So. Team agreement protects both people. So on the team agreement, if they back out, then you can report them to the government. Yeah, absolutely. That you can you can report them to the contracting officer. The contracting officer can put them on the blacklist for not performing. How uh -huh. can you be assured that they're going to be on the team agreement from the end of the proposal? Because if you're part of the team, you should get a copy of the proposal. And if you don't get a copy of it, then something fishy is going on. <laughs> okay. Question? In business, yeah. if someone does something like that and everyone else does it, is that like a norm? Because if someone does that, 
putting everyone else there. And always we talk about the support values and how we want to build relationships. And this bug does this. Wouldn't everyone else say, sue them? We don't want to do this with them either. Because it's cooking and, and you use my credentials and I find out my name's on there it's, and you don't even pay. It's, it's a business decision. A business That's decision. all it is. And listen, there were companies yeah. that were worth $40, $50, $70 million that you didn't work to. Because what they did was they used a lot of, like Indian owned companies, mm -hmm. they used a lot of African American, they owned firms, some of them were the only one that got shot. Oh, okay. And so we all got together and the guy told me to move home to the big company who made $50 million. Mm -hmm. And so they said, Cynthia, you can go to the big company. You learned the lesson. You were fortunate. It was your first rodeo. You <laughs> your first rodeo with a hundred million dollar contract. Yeah. You need to count it as a blessing. Now I was mad at the Texas Bellstein. I wanted to strike. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have the experience to strike. He said, yeah. "You're blessed that you got a chance to sit at the table with this level of business." Yeah. It will come again. No, a teamy agreement. So the question is. What's the power of a team agreement? When the team agreement is submitted with a proposal, your name is on there, and the on the basis of the award, it's awarded because of your experiences, because of your certifications. If they submit, if they submit it. So if they don't submit it, can they still use your credentials? Well, you want to make sure they submit it. <laughs> now, most of them are honorable. Most of them are honorable. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about a few bad apples out there. Most of them are honorable. They're going to do what they commit to, committed to you to do. Okay. Let's I'm gonna, I got one last question, and then after, if you have other questions, ask me after because I got to let everybody else go. So last question. Uh, lesson learned in this specific case yeah. is that even though that you have a contract situation, they cannot honor the contract. They just they have the option to. So in order to make sure that it's just with the team agreement, that's what you say. So we, we as a small company, whatever, have to push to that to have that over there. So we also can request, can you submit me a copy of what you submit? If somebody does not want to send you a copy of the proposal, that's a bad company. You don't want to work with them. Okay. So that's the, the key Correct. question here. If they don't want to send you a copy of the proposal. Yeah, they say, well, I don't want you to see my proposal. Well, it's supposed to be an open That's relationship. Right away. Right right yeah. It's kind of like coming back to our guy example, right? If a guy has two cell phones and one of the cell phones, they won't let you see the cell phone, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That makes sense. If they don't want you to see a copy of the proposal that they're submitting, something's wrong, wrong with that relationship. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up with this. The strongest relationship you can have is a, is a joint venture relationship. So that's the strongest relationship we have. So a subcontractor is good, but that's kind of like, yeah, that's like going steady, okay? A, a team agreement is like being engaged. A joint venture is like a Hollywood marriage. <laughs> It's, 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 not a, it's not a biblical marriage because a biblical marriage is a covenant marriage. It's supposed to last forever, but it's a Hollywood marriage. Yes. So a Hollywood, Hollywood marriage is meant for a short period of time. A joint venture typically is for three contracts, and then the joint venture is over. And then you have to form a new joint venture. A joint venture is where two companies or three companies, but usually two companies come together and forms a new company, and the new company bids on the project. That's the strongest, strongest agreement you can have in going after contracts. And the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is a joint venture between four large companies and a whole bunch of small companies. Everybody got a piece of the pie because if you're in a joint venture, you have to do work. If you don't do work, that joint venture is is dead. Is that why they have more than one company? Why they have more than one joint venture? Is that why they have more than one? It's a joint venture. Yeah, it's a joint venture. City of Atlanta. Yeah, for the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the City of Atlanta required that 
there is actually a joint venture that is formed between the four largest, four large companies, and they have to subcontract 35% to small businesses or minority owned businesses. Yeah, it's a requirement. They already played football three, two weeks ago. <laughs> all right, so hey, that's all the time we got here. Uh, so I will, if you need a team agreement, get the software because that's going to save you a lot of time and energy, save you a lot of attorney fees because you have the template already. These are documents that have been used by other companies uh, and that you just need to glance through it. And then if you still want your attorney to review it, now they're just reviewing. It's not going to cost you for them to draft it up for you. All right, so I will see you guys next Tuesday and we'll continue deep dive training. Let me tell you what happened there. When they got to the table, they thought they were going to win the $100 million themselves.